When you think of Benjamin Franklin, you might think of a founding father of the United States, the one who invented bifocal glasses, and you might even think of Diddy's song All About the Benjamins. But what if there was a darker side to Benjamin Franklin? What if I told you that if you're like me, there were some things that weren't taught to us in school? Did you know that in 1998 they found skeletons in his basement? Or did you know that he didn't graduate grammar school amongst so many other things? Today, in the first video of my annual Spooktober series, we will be going over the darker side of Benjamin Franklin. I cannot believe that this is the fourth year I'm doing this Spooktober series. I've said it in the past, but this is probably my favorite series to do. I know that I'm a little late to the season, but unfortunately October started very busy and ended in loss. I can't talk about it without getting upset, so if you watched my most recent YouTube short, you already know. Anyway. This is going to be the first topic of my Spooktober series, and the reason why it's being considered as part of my Spooktober series is because, well, they found skeletons in Benjamin Franklin's basement back in 1998. I definitely wasn't taught that in school. After reading about him, I decided to talk about the dark side of Benjamin Franklin, the things that they didn't teach me in school, and maybe even some of you watching are in the same boat. I usually go over a more detailed introduction to certain subjects in my video, however, since this is Benjamin Franklin, I won't be going over him in full detail. For those of you who may not know about US history, here is the Wikipedia breakdown of Benjamin Franklin. Quote, Benjamin Franklin was born on January 7, 1706, and died on April 17, 1790. He was an American polymath who was active as a writer, scientist, inventor, statesman, diplomat, printer, publisher, and political philosopher. Among the leading intellectuals of his time, Franklin was one of the founding fathers of the United States, a drafter and signer of the Declaration of Independence, and the first postmaster general. As an inventor, he is known for the lightning rod, bifocals, and the Franklin stove, among other things. He founded many organizations, including the Library Company, Philadelphia's first fire department, and the University of Pennsylvania. As the first U.S. ambassador to France, he exemplified the emerging American nation, end quote. According to allthingsinteresting.com, they stated, quote, His accomplishments are so well known that he's often referred to as the only U.S. president to have never been the U.S. president, end quote. There's obviously way more to Benjamin Franklin, but if I went over him in full detail, this video would have to be split into many parts. So for the sake of time and also not to bore those of you who have learned about Benjamin Franklin, I'm going to leave it at that for now. This is where the video will start to get a little interesting. When some people think of Benjamin Franklin, they might just know him as an inventor and founding father. Or at least that might be the basics that they remember from school. But there is so much more to him. A lot of articles that I've read have called him eccentric. In my opinion, I do think he was maybe a little bit more than eccentric and was a bit of an asshole with certain things as well. But at the same time, I can definitely appreciate the fact that he wrote an essay in 1781 called Far Proudly. This essay was actually sent to the Royal Academy of Brussels. In it, he wrote, quote, It is universally well known that in digesting our common food, there is created or produced in the bowels of human creatures a great quantity of wind, end quote. He proposed that scientists come up with something to be mixed in our food in order for our farts to not smell as bad, which, I mean, he was onto something. We all know that depending on what we eat, our farts will smell worse than others, so I definitely see where his thought process was with this. Speaking of writing, he did a lot of obscene writing. According to allthingsinteresting.com, they stated, quote, Despite his studious reputation, Franklin did not shy away from the salacious. He once wrote a letter titled, Advice to a Friend on Choosing a Mistress, which was considered obscene at the time and wasn't published when his collection of papers was made available during the 19th century. The controversial letter contained many sexual references and basically touted the virtues of choosing an older mistress over a younger one, end quote. While it may have been controversial back then, it could still be considered controversial today. 
But these two things I just talked about were a result of Ben Franklin in his earlier days working for his brother James, who just so happened to have a print shop. His brother didn't want to publish his work, so Ben decided that he would write under a different name called Silence Doggood. Silence's work would mysteriously show up on James's steps. Grunge.com stated, quote, Mrs. Doggood became a hit. According to the Massachusetts Historical Society, the publishers never believed that Silence was a real woman. But when Ben revealed that it had been him all along, it created animosity between him and his possibly jealous brother, James, end quote. While we are on the topic of James, here's another interesting tidbit of information. So, you know how Ben worked for James? Well, he actually had a contract with his brother for his apprenticeship. After James found out Ben and Silence were the same person, he was not a happy camper to say the least. Ben decided to flee, and because he broke his contract by leaving, this in turn made him a fugitive. But that didn't really matter to the younger Ben Franklin because he just started his own print shop. Something that maybe some people do or don't know is that Ben Franklin was not a great husband and would go around London and Paris hooking up with women to satisfy urges, as one source stated. Quote, Benjamin Franklin wrote in his autobiography that the hard-to-be-governed passion of my youth had hurried me frequently into intrigues with low women that fell in my way. Indeed, he was quite the womanizer. As a young man, he made advances towards his friend's mistress and also fathered an illegitimate child. And even when he reached his 50s, Franklin spent little time with his wife in Philadelphia. Instead, he chose to gallivant around London and Paris in order to satisfy his urges, end quote. Now that I've gone over some things about Ben Franklin that some of you may or may not have known, there is a lot more, but that's what I kind of wanted to go over in this video. But anyway, let's get into the reason why I even wanted to make this video to begin with. The skeletons found in Franklin's London home basement. <laughs> If you've never heard of Ben Franklin having skeletons in his basement, you might be wondering if he was a possible serial killer. When I first heard about this, I actually thought that I had missed the entire history lesson going over Ben Franklin being a serial killer. Then I started reading more about it, and according to articles, he really wasn't a serial killer. For approximately two decades prior to Benjamin Franklin signing the Declaration of Independence, he lived in London at 36 Craven Street. Of course, in 1776, he moved back to America. What a lot of people most likely didn't expect was for 15 bodies to be found in the basement of his Craven Street home. According to Smithsonian Magazine, they stated, quote, In 1998, conservationists were doing repairs on 36 Craven looking to turn Franklin's old haunt into a museum. From a 1 meter wide, 1 meter deep pit, over 1,200 pieces of bone were retrieved, remnants of more than a dozen bodies, according to Benjamin Franklin House. Six were children. Forensic investigations showed that the bones dated to Franklin's day, end quote. The construction worker who actually found the first bone, which was a human thigh bone, but the name of the worker was Jim Field. It was determined that this most likely wasn't cause for concern that Franklin was a serial killer, but it was believed that it was his friend and protege, William Hewson. Once the bones were found and studied, they learned that some of the bones were sawed through. Some bones and skulls had marks of a scalpel, or that they had even been drilled into. So what does this have to do with William Hewson? Well, William was a student of anatomist William Hunter. That was until they had a bit of a falling out, so William Hewson decided to continue studying anatomy, but because anatomy was in its infancy stages at the time, it was socially and ethically frowned upon. Back then, dissecting human bodies was actually prohibited by law, and obtaining human bodies for dissection legally was pretty much non-existent. With that said, what some people turned to was grave robbing, which is just as unethical in my opinion. Performing dissections on the loved ones of others was so unethical, and depending on what some people believe, these bodies were being disturbed in their final resting places. But yeah, go ahead and disturb the dead just to be able to perform illegal dissections. I understand that it was for the sake of science, but still, that it's just not the right way to go, in my opinion. 
I know it was hard to obtain bodies, but resorting to grave robbing also just isn't right. According to mentalfloss.com, they stated, quote, Researchers think that 36 Craven was an irresistible spot for Houston to establish his own anatomy lab. The tenant was a trusted friend, the landlady was his mother-in-law, and he was flanked by convenient sources for corpses. Bodies could be smuggled from the graveyards and delivered to the wharf at one end of the street or snatched from the gallows at the other end. When he was done with them, Houston simply buried whatever was left of the bodies in the basement rather than sneak them out for disposal elsewhere and risk getting caught and prosecuted for dissection and grave robbing, end quote. Which, again, that is also wrong because now you don't have the bodies fully intact. You probably don't have them together. You're just throwing their bones as if they just never existed. They were never human beings. They were never somebody's loved ones. I mean, maybe I'm kind of nitpicking here. or Maybe I'm kind of going overboard. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comment section below. But that still, in my opinion, is wrong. While some sources state that Benjamin Franklin wasn't involved, others say he was probably curious, and then there's those who say no one knows for sure. At this point, it's all just speculation. Well, William Hewson ended up dying from an infection the year Ben left England to come back to the United States. He was dissecting a body and cut himself on accident. This would turn into an infection and cause William to die. Smithsonian Magazine also stated that Benjamin Franklin probably knew that these illegal studies were happening in his building, but that he most likely didn't participate in these studies. With how Benjamin Franklin was, though, how he's been described as eccentric and just this different type of person, basically, I don't know if I believe this 100%. He could have just walked into the basement and observed from a distance, but I don't know. I don't think he would have either not joined in on the studies or observed. Even with all of this information we've been given by historians and whatever investigation went on, I still wonder if there's more to the story. Was Ben Franklin an actual serial killer and historians are just trying to find a different story so that Ben Franklin isn't labeled as a serial killer? I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist, I, I know, but it's just a thought I have about this entire situation. Ben Franklin isn't here to tell his side of the story, so we most likely won't ever know the full-blown truth to this. That's why, in my opinion, I don't think that it should be ruled out that Benjamin Franklin didn't have any involvement whatsoever. I'm not here calling him any kind of a serial killer or, or anything like that because there's really no evidence that proves this. There's also no evidence that kind of ties him to these skeletons that were found in his basement. It's only that it was in his home, but he did, as I've already talked about, William Hewson was also using this, this home. So I'm not trying to accuse anybody or anything like that. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there, but you guys can definitely let me know what you think in the comment section below. Well, I guess you can form your own opinions given the information that we do know about Benjamin Franklin. Some may call him eccentric. I think he was kind of an asshole at times, especially when it came to his wife and the quote unquote illegitimate child that was spoken about earlier. And it's just, to me, it's just messed up. I do question the skeletons found in his basement. Yes, they could have very well been part of the illegal anatomy school, but even if these bodies were used for school and they weren't murdered ahead of time, it's still horrible and unethical to go grave robbing. Let these people rest in peace. Thank you for watching the first part of my Spooktober series for this year. I have kind of transitioned this series into something different than what it originally was, but I started to kind of steer away from the normal true crime that, basically the true crime that you think of when you hear of the terms true crime. After giving birth, my postpartum anxiety was so bad that I just stopped consuming true crime content altogether. And so I wanted to shift the series so I could still do it by just making it spooky themed or just strange things maybe you didn't know. And I love spooky season, so I had to keep going with this series, even if I shifted the content just a little bit. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I do have a few more topics planned for the Spooktober series. 
they're probably going to spill into November. The day that I'm recording this is October 29th, so this will definitely spill into November. There's no way that I can get this edited by the end of October. But I wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for those of you who left your condolences on my community tab post and my last YouTube short. It has been a pretty rough, um, I guess you could say, October. And so, yeah, I just need a little bit of time in order to get back into the swing of things and just kind of be able to just take some time for myself and my family and then be able to still do YouTube. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the condolences. Thank you for sticking by me and thank you so much for watching.